A cold beer initially at 35 degrees Fahrenheit warms up to 40 degrees Fahrenheit in 3 minutes while sitting in a room of temperature 70 degrees Fahrenheit. How warm will the beer be if left out for 20 minutes? Well, immediately we can tell that this is a Newton's law of cooling problem in which we use the formula dt, dt, the lower t meaning time, upper t meaning temperature of an object, in this case the cold beer, equals a constant times the outside room temperature, m of t, this is typically constant, minus t of t, the temperature of the object. Now, k additionally is a proportionality constant, if you want to be a little more specific. But uh, now we have to first identify the initial values that are given to us in the problem, otherwise we wouldn't be able to solve the differential equation. So right off the bat, we can see initially at 35 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the object temperature, therefore t of 0, the initial temperature of the object, is 35 degrees. We'll just denote that as 35. Next, what else do we have? We need to know the room temperature, right? M of t. It gives it right here, room temperature of 70 degrees. Fair enough, so we just call that M of t, since, I mean, it's always going to be 70 degrees in this problem. Now we need one more constant before solving the problem, and we need t of something. So let's see, uh, do we have... It warms up to 40 degrees in 3 minutes, meaning after 3 minutes after the beginning of the test, so t of 3, it equals 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So now we're trying to find how warm it will be after 20 minutes. Therefore, the temperature after 20 minutes equals what? And that is what we're going to find. So let's start plugging in these values. So we got dt, dt equals k, since we don't know the proportionality constant yet, times m, which is 70, minus t of t, which is the function we are going to find. And that's it. So we are going to approach this by separation of variables. That is the easiest. You could do a first order linear differential, but in this case, I mean, why would you? So uh, let's do this. Uh, let's move the 70 minus t of t to the denominator of the left hand side so that capital T is paired with capital T. So it would be 1 over uh, 70 minus t of t dt. And now we can multiply the lower dt to the right side equals k. We can keep k on the right since it's being multiplied and that it's just a random constant we don't know. dt. Can you guess what we're going to do next? So to find the function of t, we're going to have to integrate. So let's put a integral here, integral here. Integrate both sides, this time with respect from 0 to t and 0 to little t. So what does that give us? That gives us, um, we can see that uh, 1 over uh, any sort of variable typically gives you ln as long as it's the first power. But here we have a negative sign, so it will be negative ln absolute value, since it's in a denominator, 70 minus t of t. I'll keep writing t of t for clarification. And this equals kt, since we're just adding a t, plus another constant, which will eventually become another uh, you know variable to multiply by. So again, since this is 1 over ax plus b, a being negative 1, x being capital T, and then b being the constant, you get negative, since it's 1 over whatever the, is in front of the uh, lower variable times uh, ln of, you know, what's the inside term. So that ends up working out for itself. So let's get rid of that negative ln so we can isolate the capital T of t. All we got to do is divide by negative 1. And since uh, these are two constants, they simply absorb the negative 1. We don't need to turn it to a minus k, t, or minus c. I mean, you could if you want, but that doesn't really affect us much. So it becomes ln 70 minus t of t equals, again, kt plus c. Now let's get rid of the ln uh, aspect of this formula. We raise e to the left-hand side, e to the right-hand side, and that gives us 70 minus t of t equals e to the kt plus c plus c. Sorry if my t's look like pluses, but you know, it's a small screen. Anyways, really quick fact uh, is that when you have e to the x times e to the y, 
that becomes e to the x plus y. Therefore, uh, we can actually move or convert this plus c as in times e to the c, which becomes another constant since e to the whatever will still be a constant. Let me uh, reiterate that. So we have 70 minus t of t equals, we'll move it in front since it's e to the y would just be e to the c, which is just c, e to the kt. Now you can see this is a general formula for a population incline or decline, and we are almost done. Now let's uh, reorganize this to isolate t of t. So if we move t of t to the right side and c e k t to the left side, we get t of t equals 70 minus c e k t. Again, you could absorb the minus, but it doesn't really matter in this case. Now that we have our general formula, we can actually start solving for the values of c and k given these initial conditions. So the easiest one is to find c by having t of 0 equals 35. So let's plug that in, t of 0 equals 35, which equals 70, just whatever is in this function, minus c, e, and since it's time t equals 0, this just becomes k times 0, which is c e to the 0, which becomes 1. Uh, therefore, uh, we can actually subtract 70 from 35, which becomes negative 35 equals negative c. Divide by negative 1, you get c equals 35. There, we found our first constant. Let's rewrite that now. So t of t equals 70 minus 35 e to the kt. Now, next we're going to find the k constant. By doing that, we can actually plug in a non-zero constant to find a k, meaning t of 3 equals 40. So let's do that. t of 3 equals 40, which equals 70, that's unaffected by the value, minus 35 e to the k times 3. So k parentheses 3, since it's at time t equals 3. So now uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. Subtract 70 from 40, that becomes negative 30, equals negative 35, since there's nothing left in terms of this here, uh, e to the 3k. Since we're trying to find e to the 3k, we're going to have to isolate that. So divide by negative 35, it equals e to the 3k equals 30 30 fifths. It's better to leave it in fractional form for now. Now to get that k out, we're going to have to take an ln, since ln of e is just 1. And then we're going to have to take an ln of that. Essentially, that becomes 3k equals ln of 30 over 35. All right, almost there. So now we're going to have to divide by 3. Finally, we get the k constant in which k equals 1 third ln 30 over 35. Uh, let's plug all of that back in. T of t, let me underline this as the next expression, equals 70 minus 35 e to the power of all of that. And remember, since it's being multiplied by t, I'll just do t thirds ln 30 30 fifths. So you can see that there's an e and ln nearby. However, you can't simplify it if you have this t over 3 in the middle of it. You need e to be directly to the power of ln. So we're going to use a little logarithmic trick here. And since that it's a uh, coefficient in front of the logarithm, we're actually going to bring that to the internal uh, terms power. So it becomes uh, ln 30 30 fifths to the power of t over 3. So t of t equals 70 minus 35 e to the ln 30 30 fifths to the power of t over 3. Remember, t of 3 isn't the power of the ln term. It's actually the power of the internal term, but it's just it's similar syntax. Anyways, now we can cancel this out. So that gives us t of t equals 70 minus 35, well, I'm running out of space here, times 30, 30 fifths to the power of t thirds. Remember, you can't simplify these uh, 35 since there's a t over 3 exponent over here.
So this is actually going to be our main functional answer for the remaining problem because all we have to do now is test how warm will the beer be if left out for 20 minutes, meaning since we literally have the temperature of the beer as a function of time, all we got to do is plug in 20. So now I can write this a little bigger now, T of 20 equals 70 minus 35 times 30 35ths of T, which in this case was 20 minutes over three. So this is actually your answer in terms of uh, just pure fractions. But if you want to crunch that out in a calculator, you get roughly 57.5 degrees Fahrenheit, which makes sense since it's actually increasing from 40 degrees in a 70 degree temperature room. And that is our answer. Again, you don't have to really rearrange this part, but this is good formatting to do this. You could have actually just plugged it in over here and then crunched down the calculator, but yes. So to reiterate, after 20 minutes, the beer will be 57.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So I hope you love cooling problems as much as I do, since this takes a lot of work. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, leave in the comments below, and good luck.